Hi everyone, this is Suraj Chopra and in this lecture we are going to cover basics of TensorFlow involving how does TensorFlow actually works and some of the terminologies associated with it. Okay, so let's begin. So TensorFlow along with all the other machine learning libraries basically builds a computational graph of your model. This computational graph like any other graph consists of a set of vertices or nodes and a set of edges. So what does these vertices represent? These vertices uh, comprise of what known as, what's known as TF ops or which stands for TF operations. These TF operations involves uh, all the math operations that you want in your model along with some utility APIs provided by TF okay and what does these edges represent these edges uh, actually represents a tensor any tensor and what exactly is a tensor in simple terms a tensor is nothing but a n-dimensional numpy array. okay Okay, so let's take the example of a simple model and see how TensorFlow creates a graph of it. Uh, the model we will use will just add two tensors. So in order to build this model, TensorFlow will create a leaf node which will input a tensor A. It will create another leaf node which will input a tensor B and it would contain another node which will add these two tensors. The, the tensor A would be an input to this node tensor B would be an input to this node it will perform an operation C is equals to A plus B and the output of this node would be a tensor C okay so this edge will have a, a tensor A this edge will have a tensor B and this edge will have a tensor C so what you can see here is that uh, tensors are flowing from one node to the other in this case A in this case B and hence the name of the library which is tensor okay so uh, a more complex example of a computational graph is something like this a is as an input is going to uh, this node b as an input is going to this node and like this okay so what's What's the benefit of creating a computational graph? The benefit of creating a computational graph uh, lies in back propagation algorithm. Backprop, which, which is uh, considered as the most important and the most difficult part of any deep learning or machine learning algorithm. So uh, one of the main be benefits of creating this computational graph is that it helps in calculating the differentials quite easily like uh, in in this example del e by del e is equals to 1 del e by del c comes out to be 2 because because uh, del e is equals to c into d and del e by del c is equals to d and d uh, here is equals to 2 so del e by del c comes out to be Right, and in the same in the same way, it helps us uh, in calculating all the differentials quickly and easily. So, using this, if we want to calculate del E by uh, del B, we can use del E by del C into del C by del B meaning uh, del E by del C is here, del C by del E is here and del E by del B can, can be calculated using these two differentials. So that's how a computational graph helps us uh, in back propagation algorithm. Okay. Now, a TensorFlow graph looks something like this. Place, uh, the, these are operations and these are edges. If you can look carefully, uh, the, these edges have something like this question mark into 28 and 
question mark into 28 these are nothing but shape of the tensors with, uh, which are flowing through this graph okay and why is there a question mark here will be explained in further videos okay so next thing to understand in uh, tensor flow is the difference between static and dynamic computational graph approach so in static computational graph approach uh, you are required to build a model before executing it this means that you are required to build a skeleton of your model Okay, how your model will look like and then create a session which will execute your model according to required inputs okay whereas in dynamic com computational graph approach the algorithm is executed as you run it Okay, so uh, let's take an example. In a static computational graph approach, if we write something like this, x is equals to tf dot add a comma b. Okay, so what will be the output of this? Uh, what will actually go into x? X would return out to be an object of a tensor with a shape obtained after adding a and b whereas in a dynamic computational graph approach x would come out to be the result obtained after adding a and b okay now if we want to execute this x in, st in a static computational graph approach what we would do is that we would create a session what this session will do, it, it will start uh, executing the graph. And if we write something like this, session dot run, and then give it x, the thing that it will return would be nothing but the result obtained after addition of a plus b. Okay, so that's what the main difference between static and dynamic computational graph approach. Okay, so till TensorFlow version 1.6, uh, we could build our models only using static approach. Okay, but after uh, TensorFlow version 1.7, uh, it introduced a feature known as eager execution, which allowed us to use a dynamic approach to build our models. Okay, so the next important thing in TensorFlow is basically some terminology related to it. Okay. So there are three important terms related to TF. These are constant, variables, and placeholders. Constants, are, as the name say, uh, these things uh, remain, uh, the values of these things remain the same during the complete execution of a model. Let's say that we want to hard code a tensor uh, in our model and let's say that it's uh, tf dot constant uh, something two comma three and uh, a would remain the same throughout the execution of our model okay so uh, variables as the name say uh, the values of these variables change as our model executes the best example of variables would be weight matrix right because the values of the weight matrix change as as our model trains it gets updated and updated uh, to best suit our output or the best to best suit our de desired output right and then comes the placeholder this is something that is uh, new and this is something that is uh, only for a static approach okay so while designing the uh, skeleton of a model we want some inputs to be there right like we want to give it x train we want to give it y train and we uh, give this input to our model during the training time 
right? Not during the uh, time we are building our model. So these uh, type of inputs are known as placeholders. Okay, for a clearer example, let's go to our first slide. Here, uh, this A acts as a placeholder, this B acts as a placeholder. And we are uh, during the training loop or during the tra uh, training time we give the value of a and we give the value of B right you uh, you, you can also see in this graph here it's a placeholder Pl placeholder actually means that during uh, creating of this graph we don't know what would be the value here but we do know what shape would it be right so uh, a placeholder is declared something like this x is equals to tf dot placeholder and we give the data type along with the shape right so uh, while creating the model of while creating the uh, structure of a model tensorflow knows that uh, this node will have a tensor with data type mentioned and with the shape mentioned here but this tensor would be provided to this graph during the training loop okay so that's enough for this lecture uh, thanks for watching hope you like it and see you in the next one